Yeah, so our study is called CLL14. It's a study that has been running since uh, late 2015, and uh, it's a randomized phase three study aimed at patients with previously untreated CLL, so previously untreated chronic lymphocytic leukemia with coexisting conditions. So all patients had to have a cumulative illness rating scale above six points and or a creatinine clearance uh, below 70 milliliters per minute as a surrogate for an impaired fitness status. And um, the aim was to see whether a combination of venetoclax plus obinutuzumab given over 12 cycles is uh, superior regarding progression-free survival compared to patients who received chlorambucil obinutuzumab as a conventional chemomonotherapy also given over 12 cycles. So the study um, tried to investigate how patients uh, tolerate and how effective the, the treatment without chemotherapy based on the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax um, is compared to the oral chemotherapy of chlorambucil in combination with the CD20 antibody obinutuzumab. So the treatment schedule um, was based on six initial cycles of combination therapy. So all patients in both arms started off with uh, three administrations of obinutuzumab as an infusion of the CD20 antibody and followed by the addition of the oral compound, either venetoclax or chlorambucil. And the combination was given uh, until uh, end of six cycles. And afterwards, in both arms, patients continued on a, so to speak, consolidating additional six cycles of either venetoclax monotherapy or chlorambucil uh, uh, monotherapy. And all patients discontinued treatment after those 12 cycles, regardless of their minimal residual disease status. Um, and and uh, after that, they entered a follow-up, which uh, continues until today. So for we will continue follow-up um, for up to nine years after the last enrollment and uh, in order to see how the long-term efficacy and tolerability of this approach is. So the primary key finding of CLL14 was that um, the progression-free survival is significantly longer after venetoclax obinutuzumab than after chlorambucil obinutuzumab. Um, this was first observed in 2019 when we had the primary readout, and now all patients are off treatment for at least three years, and we see that the majority of patients after venetoclax obinutuzumab still remains without progression-free survival event. So the four-year pre uh, the four-year um, progression-free survival uh, rate is uh, currently at 72% after venetoclax obinutuzumab compared to just 35% with chlorambucil obinutuzumab, which suggests that we can, with this fixed duration approach, um, achieve a long-lasting remission in the majority of patients with previously untreated CLL. So the results from this ongoing follow-up analysis um, inform practice because we already um, have in uh, most countries, venetoclax obinutuzumab is already available or approved. Um, uh, and in many countries also uh, it is reimbursed. So it is a treatment uh, regimen that is available for us in our day-to-day -day clinical care. Uh, and other the, the, the rationale of these follow-up analyses is that we try to understand how the long-term efficacy is and what we can expect in terms of efficacy and safety in the long term. And what we can see now with the uh, with these follow-up with this follow-up analysis is that we, particularly when we look at the minimal residual disease rates, which we are still constantly monitoring in our patients, we are seeing that a lot of patients um, uh, or a considerable fraction of patients actually maintains their MRD negative status after venetoclax obinutuzumab even three years after um, taking after the last drug intake. But we also see that there's a considerable subgroup of patients who lose their MRD response. So they become MRD positive again, but without actual disease progressions. And this is important for us uh, in, in our day-to-day -day clinical care, that we know that disease might eventually come up again and that um, these kind of treatments don't cure the patients. But that they substantially delay until the time until a disease relapse occurs. And, and therefore, um, we now are able to better understand the, the disease dynamics in low and high risk patients, and therefore are able to really understand how our patients might, um, uh, how the disease might, might develop in our patients. And, uh, and we can see now that, for instance, if we do see a disease relapse after venetoclax or untuzumab, in most cases, these are very benign relapses that don't warrant immediate retreatment or treat initiation of a second line treatment. And we also see that those few patients who actually require a next line of treatment, until today, only 17 patients have actually started a next line of therapy after venetoclax or untuzumab in CL14 
but we do see that the majority of those respond without any issues to a second line BTK inhibitor, for instance, um, which suggests that we are able to at least the first one or two or even three treatment lines of CLLR um, can be managed quite straight in a quite straightforward fashion.